Hello YouTube and welcome back to my crazy electronics projects. So with this episode I've been debugging the APU which is the Advanced Processing Unit schematic because when I was uh, simulating this schematic with the updated uh, digital data device I noticed that actually this RAM chip here was getting a contention with this one here when the RAM chip was uh, output enabled which if you look in this older schematic which is the version 9.4 APU output enable is always ground which is always low which is always output enable and I was hopefully trying to time the the right enable low signal here to switch the output for this uh, latch here so that I could drive these pins as output and then the RAM would accept the write on the data bus here. However, in certain situations, the timing between this going low for write enable and this going low for output enable, there was some contention where the RAM was still outputting data on the bus at the same time that this one was trying to switch. So on the new version of the schematic I, I fixed this in, in the simulation and this, then this fixed the uh, data contention being reported by the simulation software, by Proteus simulation software that I use for this project. And so I decided to try the bodge fix where uh, output enable in, instead of being always tied to ground, I was tying it to uh, the output from here. So this actually goes high when uh, the external memory bus here or the internal memory bus writes are trying to write something to, to the RAM. So I tied this here on the uh, real hardware and actually when I was running uh, the Shadow the Beast test it worked a lot better but still it wasn't quite perfect. So what I did then was that I had a crazy idea of because I was really pondering this now because I fixed the data contention I was thinking what else it could be and I knew that it was uh, actually uh, writes coming from the external user port which were getting cached by this write caching arrangement here. All of this area of the schematic deals with write caching of external writes into the internal APU data memory and I saw that this here was using it was using uh, the high speed clock always for advancing through the RAM, uh, the cached or latched RAM write. So I thought hold on a second let's let's just you know check the APU running at a lower clock rate to see if it's just a timing issue with accessing the RAM in the internal APU data RAM, we, we, if it was a timing issue or not. So I, I tried it on the real hardware and then the real hardware was suddenly running without any problems at all. So I knew also that if I reset the Commodore 64 so that it wasn't sending any external data writes, I knew that the APU was capable of running at the high clock rate. So this narrowed it down to only the, the, the cached RAM write for the internal data RAM was having problems at the high clock rate. So then I came up with the idea of uh, doing a second bodge fix, which was to instead of using clock, which is the high speed clock, or rather the high speed clock that's coming via that, that dip switch selector, I had the crazy idea of tying this clock to the clock speed, which was twice as slow, which comes from here. So that's what I did. I, I basically connected it to this, one of these nets here, and actually I connected it to the output from this like a, like a clock divider basically to here and I connected it all the way down to here which is pin 14 
uh, no, I pin two, uh, sorry, pin two on one four four, and pin two at the moment you can see here that it says that it's use clock. Well, I snipped that off, disconnected it, and connected it back to that slightly twice as slow clock. So then I had two bodge fixes on the board, and that's what these two fixes here are. These are the two bodge fixes applied onto the board. If I remember rightly, this red one is the output enable bodge fix, and then the the white one, which you can see down here, is the slower clock being used only for the cached memory write, or the latched memory write. So I switch on the whole board stack and it actually uh, powers on again, which is a first good sign. Um, it is currently using uh, 58 watts, which is again in line with what I would expect. So now if I press um, A on the Commodore 64, which is all nicely reset, here we go. First power on test, and wow, fantastic. So this is the uh, 9.4 APU board, as you can hear. Hopefully, the music is coming through, the parallax scrolling is all working. The, the Commodore 64 sends through all of this data, but it sends through the data to the APU. The APU is actually rendering off this as it goes down the screen. It's updating the palettes here. It's updating the, the multiplex sprites. It's updating all of the horizontal scroll registers for the, for the clouds and also for the for the grass and everything else down here and, and the wall which is in the foreground is like updating that. So this shows now that that version 9.4 APU with those two bodge fixes is working perfectly. So now if I press fire it loads the second part of the demo and you can hear the different music if I move the joystick left and right here, you can see, and I can jump up and it goes. There's, there's, there's the multiplex sprites, so the, the player character uses a lot of sprites. And also the sprites in the background here for the, for the blimp and the moon and the other blimp over here as well. Those are all sprites, so actually there is a split where you can see where the player sprite stops being rendered. There's a split between the, uh, the blimps and the moon and then the player sprite. So, Let's zoom out a bit. I can move left, I can move right. Wow, oh, the music sounds great. Fantastic. So I say this is a successful bodge fix. And the great thing is, is that this bodge fix, uh, I can make this permanent on this board. Uh, the, the fix is, it doesn't actually involve any extra components. I'm just rerouting a couple of signals from existing signals that are already on the board. So fantastic, I don't think I need to get it remade or anything like that. I can just apply the bodge fix uh, safe in the knowledge that uh, it's, it's working perfectly. Um, the only thing that I might do if, if I really wanted to improve the board is I might add uh, another dip switch here. So. If I look at this one on the board, I don't know if it's got the right graphic or not, but let's have a look. Uh, highlight the part on the PCB layout. Uh, let's go to the 3D rendering. Uh, oh yeah, look, okay, yeah, the dip switches, the, I do I do have dip switches. Okay, so let's go to the top-down view of the board. Let's um, zoom in, oops, sorry, there we go, let's zoom in there. And you can see the dip switches here. So I actually might have another dip switch, like here are uh, to basically select between the speed used for the cached memory writes. And generally that speed is going to be twice as slow as the default speed for the APU, which is up here. You can see here that this is the clock select. One, well, I might have a second clock select basically for the cached memory write, but yeah. So that's the improvement that I would do for a version 9.5 board or maybe a 9.45 probably 9.5, uh, basically to add that functionality to allow the clock speed to be selected for the cache memory, right? But yeah, that's perfect. That works really well. Oh, I'm so happy and pleased that that's 
that's working fantastically. Okay, so the next mm, board that I'm thinking about making will be a board to uh, render uh, 3D vector graphics, or rather vector graphics in general. It's a, it's a 2D uh, rasterizer, basically. I might build that board, or I might build the Mode 7 board, or I might build the scaled and rotated sprites board because recently Proteus have added uh, some extra device models which I think they're bigger EEPROMs and they're also uh, bigger RAMs and bigger EEPROMs and bigger RAMs means more lookup tables without using a whole bunch of extra components which will allow me to add in things like rotation as well as sprite scaling because rotation is just another function of, of doing another lookup. Um, or I might do the I might do the external uh, CPU board which is basically a, a mini computer CPU board which will basically run all of the processing tasks that the Commodore 64 would but at a faster clock rate with a dedicated instruction set that I can design which would allow me to have you know like 16 bit addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, so on and so forth. So I might do that to help drive the 3D board, but I don't know yet. We'll see. I haven't decided which board I'm going to do yet. Or it might be a different board. It might be a board which is a complete surprise. Who knows? Anyway, so I'm really, really, really pleased with this. It's working extremely well. So if you like my crazy electronics projects, then please do remember to like and subscribe to this channel and please do share uh, your experiences and your feedback with how this this kind of stuff goes, but yeah, I'm I'm really happy with that. I'm going to reset the Commodore 64, so you can see here, here it, or here rather, the music has stopped. The sound hardware is playing the last few samples that were being used for the music, of course, and you can see here that with the Commodore 64 reset. In fact, if I switch off the Commodore 64 completely, there you go. See. The APU is perfectly happy running the whole screen update in the background. It's just that if I move the joystick, of course, nothing's going to happen because the Commodore 64 is not sending updated parallax scrolling at register updates or anything like that. So basically, at the moment, this whole board stack, I mean, you know, the, the APU board is, is itself a processing unit. It's just geared towards processing graphics updates or memory updates geared towards uh, graphics. So if I turn on the Commodore 64 again, press A, there you go, it goes back to the loading screen and then goes back to the title screen. I remember when I was, you know, much, much younger than I was, when Shadow of the Beast came out on the Amiga, I could not believe what I was seeing in the shop window. It made me want to get an Amiga so much. But now I kind of like built one and built one which is better because this one has scale sprites and to be honest more colors I think and, and an extra layer of parallax which you know the Amiga didn't have so there we go fantastic huh I'll just leave it here for a while for the for the video